Resistance is futile. Drink the tea. One bud, two leaf. Look at how the tea surround us. I'm five feet something. Eleven? Eleven? No, ten, ten, nine. One eighty-five. Yeah, that's you. Oh yeah, you're one eighty. I'm one seven six. Oh, it's shrinking every day. <laughs> no, but you can see this is the tea, the wild tea farm here. Just uh, turning three sixty, so you can see we're surrounded by this, and the little trail back there is. Almost invisible. Yeah. <laughs> Hello there. Welcome to our channel. Today we're talking about white tea and its most famous origin, Taimushan. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell beside it so that you'll be notified as soon as we release a new video. Right now we're climbing up Taimushan. I got my head out the window like this. Look at that. Look at that. like a dog. This is great. Look at the view. We were down there just moments ago. I just want to capture the uh, changing landscape as we as we climb up and up. The trees have become, bamboo has become thicker so there's not as many views. Starting to see more evergreens uh, like something that looks like a, I don't know if it's some kind of fir, but it's a needle needle tree, something I'm more familiar with. We stayed for a few days and visited some different tea fields, even some wild ones, and we tried the wild white tea as well. All in all, we saw lots of interesting things, which we're about to show you, so stay tuned. So now that we've stopped, here's a look at the soil here at Taimushan. This is considered ideal for tea growing. Uh, according to Liu Yu, the Chinese translation for this type of soil is literally rotten rock. It's a sandy, rocky soil with some clay interspersed. It looks like, yeah, there you have it. The wires are not part of the perfect formula. Those are just there. So Jim was telling me on the way up that they, uh, <laughs> stopped plucking around the beginning of Chinese summer but because everything's getting bitten by bugs. You can see the leaf is full of holes here, which is, uh, not desired for white tea. So we've just walked into their uh, baking room. It's very warm in here. And you can see they've got these tea on a very gentle bake. Temperature controlled. Looks like that one's around 85. So the, the person in charge of the uh, charcoal bake has over 50 years of experience. And again, the, uh, the temperature is controlled very carefully by manipulating the ash on the charcoal, as well as obviously the distance. I mean, it's a really organic feel thing. That's why the guy has 50 years experience. Just amazing. We've just come into a beautiful tea tasting room. Right beside the factory. With this bare rock wall that backs into the mountain. And we suspect when it rains, it bleeds water down into this trench. But we don't know for sure, but that's what we think happens. That's what we want to believe happens. And look at the size of these tea leaves. You can see what I was saying earlier, how they, uh, they stop because of this bug biting. Not all white tea production stops, but they choose to stop because of the, uh, the pests get pretty, pretty voracious once the uh, Chinese summer comes, which is actually before it comes. So they stopped about 15, 20 days ago. So there's a little millipede. And it's not little by by my standards as a Canadian. This is a pretty giant bug. I'll put my hand in the picture. I hope I don't freak him out and or get bit. So he's about he's about just a bit longer than my index finger. 
about as long as my middle finger, a little bit longer even. Sometimes these bugs have a pretty nasty bite too, so I'm not going to get too close. I don't need to be having issues with health while I'm in China, even though I have insurance. Just walking up the mountain. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just walking up, get some exercise, see if I can find some tea. I'm sure I'm going to find some tea somewhere. Just got a mosquito bite. And I do have a view, and so do you. Take a look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Some kind of old looking city down there in the distance. I have to ask about that. Bamboo growing at that lookout where we look over to Taimushan. So there's a mini baby one. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. And still bigger. And of course these will get really big. I think they might cut them down though because they have a bit of a lookout here. But these would turn into, you know, big old bamboo logs left to their own devices. What a view. So the view I had earlier was okay, but if I took a few more steps, this is what it became. Taimushan in the background and this beautiful canyon right in front of me. Wow. And for your reference, there's that old village again that I pointed out earlier. So beautiful. Look at the baby bamboos. Should be delicious. Wow. So we're, I don't think we're at the lookout yet, but you can get see the kind of mist, the mist laying in the valley. Oh, I think that might be the lookout right there. Oh, wow. There's the city from there. And the bay. So that's the ocean there. And as Jelly was telling us earlier, continues on and around. So we're at the top of the lookout now. Down there is Taimu County. Um, they have kind of a different regional allocation sort of system here. So even though to me and you that might look a lot like a city, it's still at county level in China, so it's called Taimu County. And you've got a cloud bank sitting on the bay over there with a mountain in the an island mountain, I think. I'm not 100%. It could be a, an isthmus, uh, or let's just say peninsula. Here's this sort of top. We're on this rooftop lookout. And over here, we've got Taimushan. So another view of Taimushan and that gorgeous cliff. Hope you can appreciate it. It's quite hazy here, permanently pretty much and uh, looking down into this valley far below you can see the tea bushes way down there much lower altitude than we're at and there's those we passed them I don't know if it was videoed but there's those teepees that we didn't know what they were for they look like they're made to start a fire oh. <laughs> Just a gorgeous view. And back to uh, Taimu County. So we were just on the lookout here. And just down here, we've got some wild tea. Or probably more accurately called feral tea just left to its own devices here. Not sure if they harvest this or not. They do harvest some very tall plants here. They don't do pruning here uh, and they don't do a bunch of, they don't do a lot of bush maintenance. It's a very natural environment and very diverse. 
And you can taste that. So this is a wild young me that's growing in the garden and it has an incredible fragrance. A lot, uh, like it's got a sweet, fruity fragrance that you would swear comes through in the tea. Mm. However, I tasted one and they're incredibly tart right now. These aren't ripe yet, but they still have a powerful fragrance. I've got a young May earpiece now. <laughs> Enjoy the fragrance. So here's a bamboo. Uh, there's some really just shooting up bamboos here. Really big, but they have this, uh, you may have eaten these before, those bamboo leaf wrapped, uh, Baozunza or something? This isn't ideal for it, but I got one just a minute ago that made me want to shoot this clip. And you just wrap those sticky rice in this and make something delicious. That's Chinese tea garden, full of delicious stuff. <laughs> Another set of steps made out of stone. I actually, uh, I can't imagine the amount of work it was to make stone steps on a mountain path like this. Was it a one day effort? A week? Or did they just gather the stones over time? Slowly put it together. But, when, oh, I guess when I look around there's some stones, so maybe it's just a matter of collecting the stones and slowly build that. I don't know, it still seems like a pretty giant effort. Okay, tea lesson. So this would be considered wild tea. I think this, this would be an example of true wild tea. This is not really feral. I guess it's kind of feral because it's a seed from domestic tea that's moved over here. But I mean, it's really wild. Like if there's a... Oh, you got a bug? Oh, nice. <laughs> this is a gorgeous bamboo forest here. Very cool, but not fully dim like a, like in the West, if you were under this level of canopy, uh, it would usually be pretty dark because it's thick, but the bamboo provides sort of a light shade. So it's pretty bright on the forest floor even. But you can see there's not much growth still. <laughs> tea fully mixed on in and amongst the other stuff here. So this is this is tea here? No. 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 Eh? Well, then you it's a little bit tricky. This is tea. Let me smell it. There's some tea there. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. I have still have trouble when it's really mixed up to identify it. Now we're coming out of the bamboo grove into the full sun and the area of the tea garden. So they call that the June snow. Because June is when this blossom and the whole mountain is aromatic and white. So we're in the tea garden and we came across this stand of gardenia here. Just starting to... Uh, flush and have buds I don't I can't get too close with this camera but and they put a bunch of them look at this and I guess as you heard they call it June snow because that's when they bloom and the aroma is dazzling oh yeah the big bushy spot up there nice. 
and a part of any tea garden is replacement. These are some old uprooted tea trees and these are some new, very new bushes that have been planted. A few years, three to five I guess. This should be ready for some pluckage. This is the tea garden that just uh, started two years ago. Ah, so a couple more years to pluck. Maybe uh, three or four, maybe. They're really little. Did they start them from seed? No. Grafted. So you can see what kind of investment it is. It takes forever for the tea to grow up. It doesn't look like it's a farm. It feels like a weed. <laughs> right? So small. This wild tea garden here, I was mentioning in one of the other clips that there's not a lot of pruning or no pruning and maintenance on a lot of the gardens here. So here's, we drank this wild tea yesterday from this garden here, which I'm trying to show you. Oh, oh he's making that safe for you. For uh, spiders. He's swooshing the uh, spider webs and get scare the bugs away for Jen. What a nice man. So we're just uh, walking through the wild tea garden here and we're getting yelled at to come and join them but I wanted to show you the wild tea garden. Let's taller, check it out. Way taller than me. Yeah, really tall. This is a little bit scary but I'm just gonna walk through it. This is actually terrifying for her. <laughs> Not a little bit run. scary. Mm, you see how tall it is? <laughs> oh, watch out for the pipe. Got it. <laughs> We're just going to come around the corner into another spectacular view of Taimusha. And we can see the reservoir off to the left. So that was the wild garden. I bet you thought that was pretty wild. So we walked through that bamboo forest earlier and I don't I just wanted to show that to you in the background. Uh, let me see if I can point. I think it's right there. I don't have my proper glasses on to see this little screen, but it's way cooler in there than it is here. I'm sweating buckets now. We're out in the open sun. And uh, yeah, I just want to show you that. So I was showing some uh, clips of the gardenia earlier and how they call that the June snow. But I mean, this is just, if you can see behind me, I'm going to flip the camera around and show you. The amount of gardenia here is fantastic. So you see there's the tea garden. There's uh, someone plucking. And then over here above the tea garden, gardenia, gardenia, everywhere. I wish we could come back in June and see this and mostly smell it. Just amazing. All the way around the garden. So all these tea plants will benefit from that.